All right. Well, we will start our class where, hi, I'm Nikki, if you haven't previously taken my class. Generally, I'm there at the studio with you, but I'm excited to do a virtual class today. Feels a little lonely. I'm sure many of us are feeling some of that, but hopefully this brings us together for this next hour. So this is an hour long flow to class. Um, and I'm excited to participate a lot more with you this morning. So let's take a seat on our mats. Um, just at the top of your mat, fold the legs any way that feels most comfortable for you. Um, I do have a block here. By no means is that a requirement for class today. I know that not everyone has blocks at home. I do have a blanket though. Um, that's something that just came off my couch. So if you wanna sit up on a blanket and you have one or even a towel, you're welcome to. Again, just an option. Resting the hands on the legs and beginning to shut down the eyes or just lower the gaze toward the top of your mat. And let's take a couple of deep inhales and exhales, maybe through the nose and out the mouth. Starting to release some of that tension you may be holding on to. Filling and expanding those lungs out into space and then drawing everything down in towards the spine. And then you can release that intentional breath and begin to just breathe naturally on your own. Allowing that wave of quietness, that wave of release, start from the head and work down the body. Notice the heaviness of your elbows as they're drawn toward the ground. The rooting sensation of those two hip bones. Notice where your legs touch the floor, feeling that support underneath you. The earth is holding you up. Taking these first few moments of class just to arrive. We're in our homes or in our in a different space in the studio. So let the mind arrive now. The body's already here, but sometimes it takes that intentional moment to join those two entities together. If you find in these first few moments of class that sensations become more present for you, whether they be physical, emotional sensations, acknowledge that those sensations are there. They're real and they're happening, but there's also an impermanence to those sensations. You might become more aware of the quality of your breath, whatever it may be this morning. Maybe it's deep or shallow. Maybe it's quick or maybe it's very slow. As you continue to watch that breath, notice that that quality changes for you over the next few inhales and exhales. So we will work with breathing practice today, connecting breath and movement to help ground us here on our mats and here in our own spaces. So when you're ready, you can begin to deepen those inhales, adding an intentional mindful breath. And as you exhale, let everything release, drawing gently that belly button back toward the spine. And again, inhaling and exhaling. Now, each and every one of you will have a breath practice that feels best for you. So this is that time to find that tempo. You may choose to close the lips and channel that oxygen in and out of the nose. You may choose to let that oxygen find its way to the chest or even the belly, expanding out into space and then actively pressing all of it out.
but we'll be mindful of our breath this morning and I'll try to cue you as much as possible. As you take the next few moments to become comfortable in that tempo, I also encourage you to find a purpose or an intention for your practice this morning. And there's endless opportunities for people, place, things, ideas to dedicate this next hour to. So take the next few breaths here to find that dedication, that purpose for stepping on your mat, logging onto your computer and joining this community. Wonderful. So gently, we'll all bring our hands to heart center. Beginning to flutter open those eyes. Let's sweep the hands out and up, taking a nice deep breath together. And then exhale, draw those hands down through heart center. Beautiful. Two more times. Inhale, sweep those hands out and up. And exhale, draw hands down through heart center. Again, like that. Inhale, sweeping the hands out and up. And exhale, hands down through heart center. We'll take a side stretch from here. Inhale, bring those hands up and overhead, dropping the right hand down to the floor, left hand reaches up and overhead. So thinking into that left hip, really reach through those left fingertips toward the right side of your mat. Expanding that space on the left side of the body. Let's do the other side. Inhale, both hands up and overhead. We'll drop the left hand down this time, right hand reaches up and over. Really expanding through the right side of the body. Feeling that nice openness between the rib cage and the hip point. Inhale again, both hands up and overhead. We're twisting to the right. So right hand's coming behind us. Left hand, left hand is coming to the right knee. Here in our twist, we want to think lifting through the crown of the head and then twisting over that right shoulder. Belly button pulls back toward the spine. Continuing to breathe here as we come to the other side, inhale, both hands up and overhead again, and then exhale, twist to the left. This time that left hand's coming behind you, right hand comes to that left knee. And then feel each and every vertebrae stack one on top of the next as you gaze over that left shoulder. Keeping that breath steady and strong here. Just one more. As we inhale, come on back to center. Both hands can reach up and overhead. We'll take a forward fold. So drop both hands first, and then you might start to walk yourself down forward. Now, when you feel those hip bones start to peel up, gently draw them back down toward the earth, maybe by pressing into the palms. When you find that nice connection, maybe the head can hang loose as you feel that nice compression in the hip joint. Walking those hands back towards center, come to that nice tall seat. Both hands are coming behind the hips, so fingertips are pointing towards those glutes. Lift the heart, lift the gaze, stretching into the front of the shoulder, and maybe you choose to lift those hips up as well, opening the front body. As you exhale, lower the hips if they're up, and they'll come to the other side. So we need to flip the fold of the feet, bringing whatever foot is in front behind. Again, that forward fold. So hands come in front of you first, walking your way forward. Again, if those hip bones start to peel up off the ground, press them gently back down, and then the head and neck can go loose, and you can find that nice natural curve of the spine. Finding your way back up, nice tall seat. Once again, we'll take that shoulder stretch. So both hands behind the hips, pressing into the palms. Lift the heart, lift the gaze. Maybe you lift the hips up. And then slowly lower those hips down. Tabletop is next. So you can roll over the knees or you can shift off to one side. We want the hips to be right over those knees to help support. And then we want the shoulders right behind those wrists. So there's not too much pressure on the wrists. 
From here, we can go into cat-cow. So as you inhale, lower the belly, extend that heart forward. And as you exhale, press into the mat, tuck the chin, tuck the pelvis under. Beautiful. Inhale, lower that belly, opening the heart toward the front of your mat. And then exhale, engage the core. Imagine the mid-back is being pulled toward the ceiling. Following your own breath like this and beginning to move in ways that feel nice on the torso. There's nobody around. This is just time for you to feel what feels best. So maybe that includes some side curves, maybe gazing back at one hip and then the other. You can take some big body rolls around that spine. Or maybe you continue that cat-cow movement. Matching your breath to your movement, letting each and every one link into the next. Let's take three more here. And then you might find your way back to a child's pose. As you come to child's pose, toes may come together, knees may come out wide, sitting back toward those heels, forehead down toward the earth. Finding that heaviness again, that support of the earth underneath you. And as the gaze is now forced down toward the mat, you can once again take that inward observation. Again, acknowledging the sensations that may develop, become more present for you. Maybe revisiting the intention you set at the beginning of class. Coming up to tabletop when you're ready. Once again, aligning yourself, hips over knees. Shoulders right behind the wrist. Let's take some bird dogs from here. So we're gonna extend the right leg back and begin to lift it off the mat. So engaging that glute. Think about pressing that foot backward. Now both hands can stay connected or pressing into the right palm, you might lift the left hand forward. So we're thinking nice straight spine from the fingertips all the way through the heel. Belly pulls in, supporting that low back. And then breathing into this space. If at all you're feeling wobbly, fingertips down is a great option. Two more breaths. Last inhale, think about lengthening and exhale, find your tabletop again. If you need to shake anything out or shift back into a child pose briefly, go ahead. And we'll come to the other side. This time, left leg extends back, begin to lift it off that mat. Find that nice glute engagement and then right hand is an option to reach forward. Press into that left palm, making sure that shoulder stays nice and away from the ear. And then again, that belly button draws back toward the spine, slight engagement in the core. Two more breaths. Inhale, think about lengthening. And exhale, lower back down. Give yourself a moment here to shake that tailbone or shift back into that child's pose. We're gonna do that one more time, adding movement as an option. So aligning yourself back in tabletop, right leg releases back and lifts again. Now again, pressing into that right palm, maybe the left hand reaches forward. Now you're welcome to stay right here. This is a great option or exhale, elbow and knee come under the body. Inhale, lengthen out nice and long. Continuing like that, exhale, elbow and knee. Inhale, lots of length. Again, exhale, elbow and knee. Inhale, lengthen long. Exhaling. Inhale, let's do two more of those. Exhale, elbow and knee. Inhale, lengthen, last one. Exhale, and inhale. Tabletop is next, releasing to the floor. Beautiful. We tend to have a pretty wrist heavy class here, so make sure that you're giving yourself space to roll those wrists out whenever you're feeling like you need to. Let's come to the other side. Left leg re reaches back and begins to lift. Pressing into that left palm, maybe the right hand reaches forward. Again, stillness and right here is a great option. Or exhale, bring elbow and knee under the body. Inhale, lots of length. Continue like that. Exhale. Inhale. 
Exhale, bring elbow and knee together. Inhale, lengthen long. Just two more of those. Exhale. Inhale, last one. Exhale. Find that length as you inhale, tabletop. Exhale. Beautiful. Shake that tailbone again. Shifting back if you need to. And then when you're ready, finding your first down dog of class. Tuck those toes, lift the knees and hips, and shift backwards. So for our first down dog today, give yourself some space here to pedal in the feet, shift in the hips. Maybe let that chest fall a little closer to the earth as you feel those hamstrings reaching toward the ceiling. If at any point down dog becomes uncomfortable on the wrist or the shoulders, go ahead and take a tabletop as an alternative. And then when you're ready, find some stillness here. Pressing into that forefinger and thumb, Think about the connection of your hands and feet as your foundation. So make sure they're nice and wide, fully connected with the ground. Taking two more breaths here. On your next inhale, let's gaze forward at those hands and walk the feet to meet the hands at the top of your mat. So feet can be about hips with distance, and hands might rest down toward the earth. You might choose to grab opposite elbows. But here we just want to let that nice pull of gravity start to draw the head down toward the ground. Adding a nice bend in the knee can be appropriate, especially early in class. Our hamstrings might not be quite ready to reach as long as they normally do. So give yourself that space. Maybe shaking the head yes and no. Release that tension in the back of the neck and the top of the shoulders. Let's take two more breaths here. Releasing your hands down toward the earth if they're not already there. And let's inhale, lengthen the spine forward. So either pressing into the front of the shins or even the thighs here. Belly draws in toward the spine, and we reach the head toward the front of our mat. So you can find a little engagement in that low back, but really protecting that low spine by engaging the abdomen. Let's fold again. Exhale. Inhale, lengthen the spine again, just for a breath. Exhale, fold. One more of those. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold. We're going to take a reverse swan dive to come all the way to standing. So straight spine as you come up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's take two more breaths like that. Inhale, sweep those hands out and up. Stay standing as you exhale, hands to heart center. One more. Inhale, bring those hands out and up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful. So we'll start doing our sun salutations this morning. Serena Namaskar A. We'll take the first one nice and slow. So let's take a moment to really ground into the soles of the feet, bringing hands once again to heart center, and then press into the palms as you exhale. Elbows can come out nice and wide. Inhale, sweep those hands out and up, reach toward the ceiling. Exhale, diving forward, straight spine as you go down. As you inhale, once again, lengthen that spine to the front of the mat, and then exhale, bend those knees, plant the hands, and find your first plank. We're going to hold our first plank for a moment here. So we're really thinking about the alignment of your body. Nice straight line from the head to the hip, the hips to the knees, and the knees to the heels. Now, if you need to lower the knees down for a half plank, that's perfectly acceptable here. But you really want to find that belly engagement. So draw that belly button actively back toward the spine. Now, we're going to go all the way down to the mat, but we're going to hug those elbows in toward the rib cage and go really slow. So let's start to exhale as we draw those elbows in and slowly lower down. Everything's going to land at once on the mat. And then untuck those toes. Press into the tops of the feet. Let's just take a baby cobra here. Opening up the heart toward the front of your mat. Let's exhale lower. Two more of those, I think. Inhale. Let's bring the chest up, baby cobra. Exhale, lower down. One more of those as you inhale, lifting that chest. And exhale, lower. Coming through tabletop, press into the palm. And then exhale, tuck the toes, lift the knees and hips, and find a down dog again. Beautiful. 
So checking in with your body, noticing again, any sensations that you might become more aware of. If you haven't visited that intention for a moment, maybe now's a good time. Inhale, gaze forward at those hands. Exhale, you can step, walk, or hop to a forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Come all the way up. Nice straight spine. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's do that again. One breath, one movement. Inhale, sweep those hands out and up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands, step or hop to your plank and lower down either to the mat or through a chaturanga, hovering over the earth. Inhale, lift that chest, just one baby cobra or maybe an upward facing dog. And then exhale, find your downward facing dog. So adding or subtracting modifications that fit you best this morning. Always connecting your breath and movement. Let's inhale, gaze forward at the hands. Exhale, step walk or float, forward fold. Once again, inhale, lengthen that spine and exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way back to the standing. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Let's just do one more. Inhale. Exhale, dive down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands, step or hop back to your plank, and then lower down to the earth or through a chaturanga. Inhale, lift that chest cobra or upward facing dog, and then exhale, find your down dog. Taking a few breaths here. Let's inhale, gaze forward at those hands. Exhale, step, walk, or float, forward, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. And exhale, hands down to heart center. Wonderful. Let's just take a moment in mountain pose. Hands can rest by the sides, palms facing the front of your mat. And maybe lower the gaze or shut down the eyes for a moment. So this is a time that you can re-regulate that breath, coming back to those intentional inhales and exhales. This might be a time you revisit that intention or even just check into the body, what sensations are most present for you right now. thinking about rooting into the soles of the feet, letting that energy crawl up the body and shooting through the crown of the head. So you're standing taller now than you have all morning. You're standing more alert and more engaged now than you have all morning. Slowly begin to open up those eyes if they're closed. Hands can come to the hips. We'll step to the back of our mat. So we wanna to come to a wide-legged stance. Um, Wide-legged means a lot of different things for different people. For a lot of people, it means your ankle lands somewhere between your elbow and your wrist if you bring those hands out to a T. If there's another distance that works best for you, though, I really rely on you listening to your body. Let's think about stacking the vertebrae again, drawing the elbows back, and taking a forward fold from here. So hinging from those hips, letting the spine be straight as you go until you just can't bend anymore, and then the hands might find their way to the mat or to a block if you have one. And then you can let that nice natural curve come to the back body. So letting that head hang loose, just like we do in a forward fold at the top of our mat. Here, our feet are just a lot wider. Now you have some freedom here on your hand placement. Maybe you walk those hands in line with the feet, drawing those elbows and forearms more parallel to one another. Maybe it feels nice to grab the outside ankle and then draw that torso down. As you continue to breathe here, think about shooting those hips up and then letting that torso spill out forward. Bringing the hands back underneath the shoulders, let's press into the palms to lengthen the spine. Let's take a 
twist from here. So we're gonna to twist to the right, left hand underneath the face, right hand comes to that low back first, and then we open up to the side, letting that right shoulder begin to sack over the left. Now you're welcome to release that right hand up toward the ceiling, but think about lengthening the spine forward. That belly draws in, lots of extension here. Coming to the other side, right hand comes down. Keep that straight spine as you bring the left hand to the low back and start to open up that left shoulder. Maybe you release the left fingertips toward the sky and think about twisting and lengthening. bringing those hands back down, and then keeping the straight spine once again. Both hands come to the hips as we draw ourselves all the way up to standing. Beautiful. Turn those toes out to the outer corners of the mat and then take a nice deep squat. So the hands can stay on the hips. They might come to heart center, or maybe you take more of goddess arms. But we want to think about firing up those quadriceps, so really drawing the hips down, encouraging a nice deep bend in the knees. Checking in with your alignment. Make sure those knees are tracking over the midline of your feet. Belly's pulling in, straight spine. And then maybe we sink a little bit lower. Now I'm not there to see each and every one of you sink a little lower, but I'm gonna take an honest guess that you can sink a little lower now. Perfect. Belly pulls in, we don't lose that nice engagement in the torso. We start to feel that fire build, that's great. And then we just sink a little bit lower. I promise there might only be one more of those. Keeping that nice deep breath. This is where it's very handy. And then sink a little lower. That's the last one. One more breath here. Star pose. Straighten those legs out. Arms reach toward the sky. Nice big stretch. Oof. And then exhale, hands down to take that nice deep squat again. Let's add breath and movement. Inhale, reach, star pose. And exhale, hands down through heart center. Again, inhale, reach those hands up, star pose. And exhale, hands down through heart center. Two more, inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale, reach. And exhale, hands down through heart center. Let's straighten those legs, bring hands to the hips, and step to the top of our mat. Woo, shake it out. Bringing hands to heart center, we'll take one vinyasa to get to downward facing dog. So when you're ready, reach those hands out and up, inhale. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant those hands, step or hop back. Now you have an option here to go through a vinyasa or head straight to downward facing dog. Using your breath here the whole time. When you get to down dog, let's lift that right leg to the back of the room, reaching the sole of the foot. And as we exhale, knee into the chest, shift toward a plank pose. Inhale, three-legged dog, reach that foot back. And exhale, knee to chest, plank pose. Beautiful, continue like that. Inhale, reach. Exhale, knee to chest. Let's just do two more. Inhale, foot reaches back, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to chest. Last one, inhale, reach. And exhale, knee to chest, hold here. So again, we're gonna bring that knee into the chest, foot toward the glute, look between the hands, and then put the foot there. We're coming to a low lunge, a jinnyasana. So lower that back knee down. You can keep the back toes tucked or untucked. Hands can come either to the thigh, heart center, or extend them overhead. If you need to pad that back knee, grab a blanket or fold over your mat one time. <sighs> Connecting back with your breath here. And then starting to feel that length on the left hip flexor. Belly pulls in. We'll take a side stretch, right hand down to that thigh. Left fingertips reach up and over. Both hands reach up and overhead. We're gonna drop the left hand down next to that right foot and open up that right shoulder. So you're gonna see my back. Hopefully you still hear my voice. 
Now you have the option here to tuck those back toes, lift the back knee if you like. So find that twist, draw the belly button away from the thigh, giving yourself a little more space to open up. We're gonna take a side plank from here. So you're gonna press into that left foot. You're gonna bring that right foot to meet the left foot. Now you can always lower the left knee down. You might even lift the right leg up. Taking three more breaths in our side plank. Two more. Last breath here. Normal plank, both hands down to the earth. Option here to vinyasa or head straight to downward facing dog, your choice. From down dog, we're gonna lift that left leg up. Exhale, knee to chest, shift toward a plank pose. Starting on the other side now, inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to chest. Inhale, three-legged dog, not lots of length. Exhale, knee to chest. Two more of those, inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to chest, nice. Inhale, three-legged dog. And we're holding, exhale, knee to chest. So bring that knee in closer to your chest, foot closer to your glute, look between the hands and then put the foot there. Beautiful. Lower that back knee down. Again, hands can come to the thigh, they can come to heart center, maybe they reach up and overhead. So we're opening up the right side torso, right? Or right side hip flexor. Letting the shoulders drop down the spine, bringing those rib cage points together. We'll take the same side stretch. So left hand down to that left thigh this time. Right fingertips reach up and over. So really creating more space between the rib cage point and the hip point. As we come up, both hands reach overhead. This time, right hand plants itself next to that left foot and then you open up that left shoulder. So you have the option to tuck those back toes to lift that back knee. And then find that belly drawing away from the thigh. So you all know what's happening next. We're pressing into that right palm, finding our side plank. So left foot has to meet the right at the back of our mat. You have those same modifications at your disposal. So right knee can drop down or you can lift that left leg up, holding for three more breaths. Two more. Last one here, lots of length. And then dropping to your normal plank, option as always, vinyasa or head straight to downward facing dog. Catching your breath here in our down dog. And then on your next inhale, let's lift the right leg up. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Nice job. Keep going. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Last one. Exhale, knee to elbow. Finding your three-legged dog. This time, knee to chest. Step between the hands. High lunge is where we're headed. Crescent pose. So hands can come to the thigh. Again, heart center or extend those fingertips toward the sky. So this time, that back knee is lifted. Nice, finding that nice deep bend in the right knee, encouraging the left hip forward so your hips are nice and square to the front of your mat. So we're gonna add some movement here. As we exhale, let's lower the hands down to airplane arms, and then we're gonna lower the torso 45 degrees. So there's a long line now from the crown of the head through the left heel. As we inhale, everything comes back up, finding your crescent pose. Exhale, find that nice angle in the torso. 
and inhale, find the crescent pose. Continue like that, exhale, and inhale. Exhale, and inhale. Let's just do that one more time. Exhale, and inhale. Beautiful. So those glutes might be firing up and not perfect because we're headed to warrior three next. Hands can be at heart center. You can take them back to those airplane arms. But with one step or a couple of small steps, you're going to hinge forward on that standing leg. So we're thinking long line from the crown of the head through the heel of the foot. Think about pointing all five toes of that back foot down toward the earth and then keeping that nice breath. Two more. Last inhale here. Crescent pose as you bend into the standing leg. Let those back toes reach toward the earth. Both hands reach overhead. And then exhale, hands down to the ground. Step back to your plank. As always, option to vinyasa or straight to down dog. All right, we're ready for the other side. Let's inhale, left leg lift. As we exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Continue like that. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Let's do two more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. This time, as we take our three-legged dog, we're going to bring the knee to the chest, step between the hands, and then find our nice crescent pose. Hands again to the thigh, heart center, or extend them overhead. So now we're opening up that right hip flexor, reaching through that back right heel. So we're going to find that movement again. So we're going to drop those hands back down toward the floor, finding those airplane arms, and then finding that nice tilt in the torso. As we inhale, draw ourselves up. And exhale, find that tilt in the torso. Continuing like that, inhaling. And exhale. Let's continue on. Inhale. And exhale. Let's say two more. Inhale, draw those fingertips up. And exhale, draw them down. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. As we come back to our crescent pose, we'll prepare for our warrior three. So again, knowing where you want your hands, maybe heart center, maybe reaching down toward the earth. With one step or a couple of small steps, hinge forward onto that standing leg, reaching the right heel toward the back of the room. Pointing all five toes of that back foot down. Using that breath to steady that standing leg. We're taking two more. Last inhale, lengthen. Find your crescent pose, letting the right toes reach toward the earth. Inhale, both hands up toward the sky. Exhale, hands return to the ground. Step back to your plank. Take a vinyasa or head straight to down dog, and then a child pose. As you find down dog, you can then lower those knees, letting the hips shift back toward the heels. Forehead makes its way down to the ground. Taking two more breaths here. Eventually finding your way back to down dog. Let's inhale, gaze forward at those hands. And as you exhale, you can step, walk, or float forward. Inhale, lengthen. 
Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Find your way back to standing. And exhale, hands come down to heart center. Nice. So let's take a figure four balance pose today as our standing balance before getting onto the ground. So we're going to start in a chair pose. Feet are hips width distance, and then we'll sit back into that chair. So again, you've got some freedom with the arms. So hands might be at heart center. They might reach forward. They might be overhead. Think about that length in the spine, though. Nice straight spine toward the ground. All four corners of the sole of your foot are pressing down into the ground, so you've got lots of space here for that nice, strong foundation to hold your weight. And then think about sinking a little lower. We've already fired up these thighs once today. We can do it one more time. So we're going to sink into that right foot as we begin to lift the left foot up, cross that ankle over, and then sit back into that chair. So we're crossing the left ankle over the top of the right thigh. There's our figure four. We're not going to take the fold or the hand balance today. We're just going to focus on opening up that hip and then flexing those left toes. Keeping that nice deep bend in your standing leg here. Let's take three more breaths. Two more. Last breath here. So we're gonna to try to stay in the chair the whole time. So releasing that foot back down, find that nice deep chair. Oof, those thighs are really burning. All right, other side, rooting into the left foot. Let's cross the right ankle over the top of that left thigh. Keeping that nice deep bend in the standing leg. Using that breath here, really channel all of that oxygen into those muscles. few more breaths here. Maybe you sink a little lower into that chair. Last one. Find the chair again. Lower both feet to the earth and then deep bend in those knees. Three breaths. Two more. Last one. Forward fold is next. Exhale. Oh, that feels nice. If you want to grab opposite elbows here and really let that gravity draw that spine down, you're welcome to. We're going to take one final opportunity for a vinyasa here. So you can plant those hands down, step or hop to your plank, and then go through vinyasa. Otherwise, shifting back to a down dog and then a child's pose again will be your option. As we inhale, come to a tabletop and let's lower down onto our belly. You might take a chaturanga to get there, or half chaturanga, and then make a pillow for your chin or your forehead with your hands. <clears throat> so we're gonna do two rounds of locusts. And if you've taken my class before, you know that there's plenty of options with different locusts. Um, but we're gonna take two rounds. So you can choose to include the torso, the feet, or both the torso and the feet. So if you're unfamiliar with that, those options, torso would just be baby cobra, that's great. Just the feet would just be lifting the feet, which is also great, or taking a full locus would be lifting both at the same time. But let's do it all together, two rounds in total. So we'll zip the legs together, press into the tops of the feet so you can really feel those legs engage, lifting the knees away from the mat. And then when you're ready, maybe pressing into the palms, which are at chest height, and then lifting the torso. Now you have an option here to take less weight in the hands, maybe fingertips, maybe lifting all together, or maybe lifting the feet as well. Taking three more breaths here in our first locus. Two more. Last one, inhale, lift, and exhale, lower on down. Making that pillow again for your chin or your forehead, 
you might shift those hips side to side, maybe windshield wiper those legs. Let's do another round. So lowering those feet back down, zipping those legs together. Start to press into the legs so you lift those knees off the ground. Find your preferred hand placement. So maybe you press into the palms, maybe you reach back for those toes. Inhale, starts to lift the torso, maybe lift the legs. Two more breaths. Last one. Slowly lower on down, making that pillow again if you like to. And then again, shifting in the hips, windshield wiper the legs. We'll all make our way to a child's pose again. Let's come to our seat. So shifting those onto your sit bones here. We're going to do two rounds of Navasana or boat pose. <clears throat> so if you like to sit on a blanket for that, Tubanabi points pending the surface that you're sitting on can be pretty hard. But what I'd like you to do is really feel those Tubanabi points. So make sure you can feel them. If you need to pull away from flesh, please do. I like to start with grabbing the backs of my thighs and really lengthening the spine. So finding that nice tall length in the torso. And then and this for me is a real kicker, is finding that angle in the torso. So I'm gonna face more sideways so you can see that. So if I'm sitting nice and tall at first, I'm gonna find that angle in the torso so that my belly starts to fire up, but I don't start to roll onto my low back. I can keep that long spine. So you might start here, and this might be enough of a boat for you today. We're doing two rounds in total. Otherwise, you might come up onto the toes. You might begin to lift the feet, and you might begin to release the hands. Maybe you start to straighten those legs more. Today, I'm gonna to keep my knees bent. We're taking three more full breaths here in our boat. Two more. Last inhale, think about lengthening, and then exhale, lower the feet down, hug the knees in. Whew. Give yourself a moment here to release any tension in that low back, release any tension in the front body. And then we'll do one more round of boat. So again, I like to start by really lengthening that spine, keeping a hold on my legs at first to find that nice angle of the torso, and then coming up onto the toes, maybe lifting the feet up. Now at that point, maybe I wanna release my hands, finding that final destination for my boat, and we'll take three more breaths. Two more. Last one. And then those feet can come down. We're gonna to come to a Baddha Konasana. So, so soles of the feet together, knees out nice and wide, finding that length again in the back body, and then maybe you find a hinge. So we're gonna open up those inner thighs. If you wanna let the head fall down toward the toes, that might feel nice as well. Inhaling, coming on up. Let's take one forward fold seated. So a nice staff pose. Again, you want to find those two knobby points. So move that flesh back away. Think about sitting nice and straight, engaging the legs. Inhale, both hands up and overhead. Exhale, let the hands fall to the legs. So you can grab anywhere on the leg. In future classes, you might even use a dish towel for a strap. Letting that head start to hang if you want to let gravity do its magic on the torso, drawing it softly down toward those legs. Coming up to a seat, drawing yourself all the way up. So I'd like to take a reverse plank from here. So hands come behind the hips once again, fingertips pointing toward the glute. Pressing into the palms, lift the heart, lift the gaze, dig those heels in as you lift the hips up. 
Now, if that's too much on the shoulder, bend those knees, come to a nice bench pose. Otherwise, finding that strength in the legs, lifting the hips, one more breath, and then lower those hips on down. Let's roll onto our backs. So shifting your way down, maybe coming one vertebrae or rolling onto the spine. Give yourself a nice hug here in our reclined position. I'm gonna scoot a little bit forward. All right. So we're gonna take two rounds of boat pose. So feet are about hips with distance. Knees are engaging toward one another. Pressing in to the soles of the feet, tuck that low belly in and start to press the heels down as you lift the hips up. Now in this first bridge, you can find any placement of the arms. Maybe you roll those shoulders under. Maybe you find a little more lift on the inhale. Think about drawing the back of the head down toward the earth as the chest and the hips lift up. Two more breaths. Last inhale here and exhale. Let's lower on down. Here you can windshield wiper those legs. One more round of bridge. So lining yourself up and bend these pointing toward the sky. Connect the soles of the feet down. Nice little pressing of the low back into your mat and then start to draw those hips up on your inhale. Again, option to roll the shoulders under and the fingers if that feels nice. Continuing to use your breath. Two more here. On your next exhale, we're lowering back down to the earth. This time, draw those knees in for the chest. Give yourself a hug. So I'd like to take the next uh, few moments for inversion. Because I can't see you today, I think we're just going to do a candle sit. So just extending the legs toward the sky. If you have a wall next to you, maybe legs up the wall is what you're looking for this morning. We'll lower that torso back down to the ground and then begin to lift the feet skyward. If you have a block at your disposal, you can always flip a block under that low back, help supporting the spine and then lift the feet. But if not, no worries, just reach those feet overhead. So you wanna keep a nice engagement of the legs, hands can rest on the mat and then focus on your breathing. Think about the legs growing longer toward the ceiling, like you're almost gonna step onto your own ceiling. We're gonna take about five more breaths here. As you come into those final breaths, you might start to draw the knees in toward the chest. Giving yourself a nice hug, maybe a soft rock. And we'll find a final twist. So knees can fall to the right as you bring your gaze to the left. You might shift the hips off to the left ever so slightly to line up that final column. Coming to the other side, you can bring the knees through center or walk those feet across. Again, maybe shifting the hips off to the right as those knees fall to the left. Gazing off to the right side of your mat.
coming back through center. Happy baby will be our final posture. So knees into the chest, grab the outsides of the feet or the back of the thighs to draw those knees into the side of the rib cage. If you wanna rock back and forth or straighten one leg and then the other, I welcome you to do so. As you take that final posture here, you can start thinking about where you wanna go with your Shavasana, because that's next. Slowly lowering those feet down and maybe beginning to extend the legs long. If you have socks or sweatshirts, if you have a block or blanket, you're always welcome to incorporate that into your Shavasana. But this is a time to lay on your back and start to release any tension you're still holding on to. As you get settled, maybe starting to take a couple of deep breaths in and out of the body. Letting that natural breath return. If it's comfortable to shut down the eyes here or start to unfocus the gaze toward the ceiling, I welcome you to do so. Release any tension in the hands or the feet. Separate the teeth. Move the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Relax the space between the eyebrows. And for the next few moments here, we'll simply be. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, your hands and your feet. Your arms may reach overhead as if you just woke up. Gently drawing those knees in toward the chest and let's fall off to one side in a fetal position. When you're ready, coming up to a seat at the top of your mat, your eyes can remain closed here. Your hands may rest on the legs or at heart center. Express gratitude toward yourself for taking this time out of your morning to do something just for you. Revisit the intention you set at the beginning of class one last time. As always, I'll end today's class with a quote. Today, it's a poem. And finally, I will grow in all the places that I've too long hid. So watch as I shed this skin and become something much more beautiful than flesh and bone could ever be. Watch as I become me. With respect and gratitude, we say namaste. Thank you all so much for sharing class this morning. What a fun way to continue to connect with community as we are all isolated.
So I think Sarah's gonna take us off 